as you can see, we have quite a, diff a different panel here. We've got people from the IT side, the OT side, the factory side, uh, the supplier side. So we're going to touch on all of that as we talk about some of the difficulties that we have with IT and OT in the manufacturing space. And maybe we should define IT and OT briefly for, for anyone who may be struggling with those acronyms. IT is all of the uh, business infrastructure on the computing and networking side and OT is the same structure on the manufacturing and operations side. It's that simple. There is definitely a difference between IT and OT and in the understanding of what goes on in the shop floor. So that's what we want to focus on a little bit today is what some of those differences are and how we can overcome the issues that arise from those differences. So I'd like to start with Larry. A uh, question for you. Uh, as someone who goes around building factories and lines, what is the biggest issue that you see with networking within operations? So the term IT, OT. Uh, OT's been around for a while, but the term has not. And to this very day, IT people think that it's all just Ethernet. We've heard it before. You connect, and it's the problem. Uh, when I first started networking, one of the first plants I had done a full networking on, uh, our IT people said, hey, we could just send your Rockwell PLC through our switches to the downstream PLCs. And I said, oh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put some fiber optic in because that won't work. And, oh, no, it'll work. It didn't work. We used fiber optic. That was 16 years ago, 17 years ago. This very day, those same IT people, they don't understand controls. They don't understand factory floor automation. Siemens, Rockwell, GE, they're very big in that industry. Yet the IT people don't really consider them to be somebody they need to understand. That's why you have controls engineers. I have come to the belief that controls people technicians, even high, you've got your higher end maintenance people that can understand the machines, can understand the controls. They're more likely to be some of our best OT people than somebody from the IT side that can learn controls. Does that mean IT people cannot be OT people? No. But the IT people need to have more exposure on the floor. They really need to understand what's happening on the floor. So Dave, as a, somebody who provides infrastructure for both IT and OT systems, what tools, advice, or, or direction can you give our friends Gockman and Larry to help them work better together? <laughs> um, so uh, first of all, uh, you know, the whole idea of an IT team and an OT team, we have to kind of stop there. Problem number one is you're not talking about your company's team. Uh, so get rid of the pronouns I and me. It's it's we and us. And so you know when you're when you're in a room with one another, get rid of the well. It's not you know it's, it's not us. Or get rid of the well. I checked and it's not my problem. No, no, it's our problem. So pronoun changes. Just change the way you phrase things. Or if you do believe it's let's say not under your group's ownership. Be kind of the you know the bigger person, right? And say, actually, where it belongs doesn't matter. We we collectively have got to solve an, an issue together. You put them in the same space, and they begin to build relationships. And so they start asking one another about their family and what's going on after work, and hey, do you want to go out to the pub? And suddenly they begin to care about one another. And once you start caring about one another, you care about the business too. And so now you go into those meetings, and hey. It's not me versus you. It's us against this problem. And that's just such a huge shift by just changing the mindset. There are solutions, though. And so, Mark, I want to turn to you for a minute. You put together a document with OMEC, the Organization for Machine Automation and Control, back in 2020, and a follow-up one you, you talked about this morning coming out this year or early next year. 
what does that provide that helps resolve some of these IT, OT issues that we've heard from our panelists? Yeah, I think one of the biggest, when we did the first uh, document, uh, we, we spent a lot of time on IT and OT, getting the viewpoints of, of, of individuals. And what we found is, is there's an education required on both sides. Uh, there's an education that the OT people need to explain to the IT people. And if the IT people treated the OT people like the secretaries and people isolating them from that, then there was a controversy. There was the OT people saying, it's not being fixed fast enough, I have this downtime, it's all the IT fault, and that just sort of built on itself. And so really the element is a responsibility of OT people also needs to help educate the IT people of those differences and our, their capabilities. And the IT people have to understand that people that are on the plant floor are capable of handling and supporting those types of systems. Okay, very good, very good. So I think one of the key things that Mark alluded to was the fact that there are definitions that are different between the two worlds that have similar terms. Real time, deterministic, I, if you're working with SAP, real time is sometime this shift, you know, it, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Whereas now when you get out on the shop floor, real time is that better have happened in time frames I can't even begin to, to think in. Yeah, you, you, you bring up a, a really good point actually, and that is just the, the definitions between teams. So like just definitions are, are, are different and you said it, right? Real time, real time comps, right? Low jitter, we talk about low jitter applications. Well, what do you mean low jitter? I, I can have something in the IT realm that, you know, three, four, five milliseconds is more than five. Five milliseconds on the process floor, you might as well just pack it all up and go home. So, you know, just agreeing definitions, agreeing on what a, a word means. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the floor and see if there are any questions from our audience for our panelists. So let me repeat the question real quick for those that may not have heard it. Building management systems, are these IT, are these OT, and what's the trend? There's a gray area, there's an overlap. And, and I don't care for the IT, OT team myself. Uh, I think you have controls engineers and controls technicians that understand the manufacturing process, and you have computer science and network engineers that understand the business network and how things work and how to move bits back and forth. And there's a lot of overlap in between. That's where we have to have this cooperation. We have to understand what is IT's needs to make sure that we can stay in that, that secure silo, that we're not breaking protocols, we're not making rules, we're not gonna put some cell phone doohickey in the plant to bypass security. We're not doing that. And then we need IT to tell us, this is, this is how we can, here's the parameters, here's the ditches, stay between it. So we're working with our IT people, our so-called OT people. We, we don't have any designated OT people. We have controls engineers, we have technicians, we have maintenance people that very well could be OT people, but we also have to make money. So our, our job is to keep machines running. So, but there is a quite a bit of overlap. There's, um, the way I look at it, there's, there's three stages where you get involved with an IT or OT issue sometimes. The first one started back in 84 when uh, the PC was invented. And I had programmers, I was developing PLCs at the time, and I had customers coming to my office saying, I need you to build a programming panel that uses that IBM thing. And the reason I need that is because that IBM thing I can't buy because the IT group wasn't gonna let me have one of those. And so I need you to call it a programming panel so you can sell that to me so I can have that. So the compute platforms that were moving in, the operating systems of Windows and whatever, was the first phase of this, this sort of collision that was happening. The second phase is Ethernet. As Ethernet becomes more and more prevalent and replaces more of the field buses, you have that part. The third one, can anyone guess what the third one is? All right, data, information. Because now I have the compute platforms. 
Now I have the infrastructure. It's going down and touching all the various devices for various reasons. So information is going to start to percolate up and you're gonna have the issues with the IT and the OT organizations as to who owns it and how do you control it. And so those are the three parts that I see as we're moving forward. They all fit together. The PC first is pretty well, everyone knows you have that now. Everyone's comfortable with it. Some people are more comfortable with Ethernet, but it's still in that emerging phase and data is gonna be the next one. And there's gonna be a lot of discussions in regard to who owns the data and what to do with that data. And that's gonna be another discussion with the IT and the OT organizations in that regard. Very good. So to wrap it up, I have one last question for Isaac. One of my roles within PMMI uh, is to connect machine builders with machine users and make sure that they're communicating well and they're effective and efficient. So what is one piece of advice that you can give to me that I can share with both sides of that equation to make your job easier? From what I see with a lot of OEMs and vendors is a little bit more reluctancy to give access to data tags right away. Um, so from that aspect of it, getting a little bit easier access to the data right away makes it a little bit easier to integrate into, our, in, into that OT. Um, and then working at least on some level with the IT side of it, that's where you have the opportunity to be able to uh, pass that data on to the, or put it in front of the people that need to see it, um, whether it's an operator, machine builder, or whoever. Very good. So thank you to our panelists. I think we had some very good discussions. I hope that everyone learned a few things. And uh, feel free to talk to our panelists for some more detail afterwards. Thank you.